notes section 0 0.2 classifying real numbers so what is a real number it's it's a number right it's real as opposed to imaginary um, what's the first type of number that you guys learned about one and then two, two and then three four exactly you guys learned how to count right you have one toy have two toys three toys and you learned that naturally while you were growing up. And that's the first type of, of uh, numbers that we're going to talk about. Those are called natural numbers. So what I want you to do is go to the center of your page in your notebook. Let me move the title out of the way so you can have plenty of space. Go to the center of your page in your notebook. And in a fairly small box in the middle of the page, write down natural numbers. And then give an example of natural numbers. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. That means that it continues forever. Now, why are these called natural numbers? Because this is how we learned how to count naturally. These are the first type of numbers that we naturally learned about. One, two, three, four. So once again, we learned how to count naturally. One, two, three, four. And then we grew up a little and we understood the concept of the number zero, right? The number zero means nothing, but you didn't start as a child like, oh, zero, one, two, three, four. No, you learn how to count first naturally, one, two, three, four. And then you grew up a little, and then you understood the concept of zero. And whenever you, you include zero into that group of numbers, it's no longer called natural numbers. It's called whole numbers. And that's uh, very easy to, to remember because the number zero itself is the number with the biggest hole in it. So whenever zero is included, you call that group of numbers whole numbers. Whenever zero is not there, you just call natural numbers. Okay. So again, you naturally learned how to count one, two, three, four. You grew up a little, you learned about the number zero, okay? Now we grew up a little more and we realized that there's not only positive numbers, but there's also negative numbers, right? And those are called integers. So go ahead and make a box around the whole numbers and then write the word integers up there and then give the example of integers which are still the 0, 1, 2, 3, but it's also negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So what are integers? They're nice numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or negative numbers that are nice, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, also including the number 0. So integers are nice numbers, either positive or negative, or 0. Um, let me ask you this, guys. If I told you classify the number two is the number two a natural number yeah. yes. yes is the number two a whole number yes, yes. is the number two an integer yes. yes cool now if you want to be as specific as possible and they say classify the number two you're not going to say it's an integer even though it is but you want to be as specific as possible you're going to say two is a nice natural number okay anyway once again you learn how to count naturally one two three four you grew up a little you learned about the number zero you grow up a little more, you realize that there's nice uh, positive numbers and negative numbers. And then you, you matured even more and you realize that not all numbers are nice, like 0, 1, 2, 3. You might end up with something like 2.5 or like negative 3 and a half or like negative 3 fourths. Those are fractions, right? Or decimals. Those numbers are called rational numbers. organize this a little better so go ahead and draw a bigger box and write down that title rational numbers and inside the word rational is the word ratio and the word ratio actually means fraction so whenever you have a fraction that's what we consider or we classify as a rational number not only that guys fractions are really division problems uh, and if you were to divide like like the fraction one half if you were di to divide 1 divided by 2 on a calculator, it'll give you the decimal 0 0.5. So a fraction is really a decimal, right? 1 half means the same thing as 0.5. Half of a pizza is the same thing as 0.5 of a pizza, right? It's still half. Um, so it doesn't matter if you have a negative. As long as you have a decimal or a fraction, you call those rational numbers, okay? Do we understand? Now, if I tell you, classify the number three, what is the number three? What would you guys say? 
Natural, absolutely. Three is natural. But is three a whole number? Yes. yes. Is three an integer? Yes. yes. Is three a rational number? Yes. I know you're thinking, wait a minute, isn't a rational number a fraction? Well, yeah, but can't I make the number three? Yeah, I just put it over one. Or a decimal, because rational numbers are fractions or decimals. You could make three into a decimal by going 3.0, right? So it, it's kind of like this, guys. If I tell you, where do you live? And you say the United States, you're not lying. You do live in the United States, right? United States of America. That's kind of like saying the number three is rational. Yeah, that's true. It is rational, absolutely. But if you want to be more specific, oh, I live in California. That's like saying the number three is an integer. Want to be more specific? Oh, I live in the Imperial Valley. That's like the number three is a whole number. Uh, where do you live? Oh, I live uh, in El Centro, right? That's very specific, right? So it's very important to understand that when they tell you to classify, you want to be as specific as possible. But then again, if they ask you for, for you to state all the possible groups that a number belongs to, then you would list all the groups that it belongs to. So if the instruction said, name all the groups that the number three belongs to. Oh, well, the number three is natural. The number three is a whole number. The number three is an integer. And the number three is a rational number, right? OK, so do we understand that? OK, so rational numbers, fractions or decimals. But even though we have fractions and decimals, we still understand them. We know what half a tank of gas is. We know what it's like to owe somebody 75 cents. So rational numbers, we understand them. They make sense, right? Now, how about this? Let's take a pause right here on this, and let's just think. The word rational in the English language compared to irrational in the English language, what does that mean, rational and irrational? Anybody? Makes sense, and it doesn't make sense, right? It would be rational for me to continue teaching this lesson, right? It's rational. I'm the teacher, you're the student, we're right in the middle of class. It's rational for me to continue teaching the lesson. It would be irrational for me to tear off my shirt right now. That's irrational. That's crazy, right? I'd get fired. So rational, it makes sense. You understand it. Irrational, it's crazy. Could anybody think of a crazy number? 1,265. Even though that's crazy, I know what 1,265 is. It makes sense. Like if somebody says, hey, you owe me $1,265, I know what that means. It makes sense. That is rational. But I'm talking irrational, like, like pie. Like pie. Pie is ridiculously crazy. Why is it crazy? Because pie is an infinite decimal that never repeats. It doesn't have a pattern. It is crazy. Let me actually show you right here. We have irrational numbers. So yes, all of these are rational numbers, but right here we have the irrational numbers. So I wanted you to, to relate to, to the English language what, what it means. Rational means it makes sense. You understand it. Irrational, we're talking crazy. Pi is crazy. Why? Because it's 3.14159265363, and it doesn't end. It continues on forever and ever and ever, and there's no pattern. It doesn't repeat either. That's stinking nuts, right? So irrational numbers are crazy, OK? Um, how about this? Just write down the pi as an example of irrational numbers. Um, but don't write these down yet. We'll get back to these. So in order to understand better irrational numbers, we need to really understand radicals. What are radicals? They're square roots. And in order to understand square roots, we need to understand perfect square numbers, OK? So everybody jot down in your notebooks, perfect square number list. And we're going to write a list of numbers uh, that represents perfect square numbers. So the very first number on the perfect square number list is the number 1. And we rarely use the number 1 on radicals. But the next one is 4. The next number on the perfect square number list is 9. The next number on the perfect square number list, anybody? 13. 13? 16. 16. All right, 16. What's the next perfect square number? 25, and then 36, and then 49, and then 64. And you're, some of us are probably thinking, what the heck? Where are these numbers coming from? A perfect square number list is coming from taking a number and squaring it, right? 
For example, if I took the number 2 and I squared it, multiplied it with itself, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 4, 16. 5 times 5, 25. 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8. So at any point, if you know how to multiply, you should be able to get a pencil and a paper and just create this list from scratch, right? 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and you could make this list of numbers. Now this list of numbers is called the perfect square numbers list. And of course this list goes on forever, right? We have uh, 9 times 9, 10 times 10, 11 times 11, 12 times 12, and I put dot 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 because it continues forever. Now my point in showing you this list is uh, this fact. The square root of a perfect square number is a perfect answer. Go ahead and jot this down in your notebook. So we have some examples here. The square root of a perfect square number, that's any of these guys, the answer is going to be a nice, perfect answer. What is the square root of 4? 2. 2, right? The answer is a nice, beautiful, natural number 2, right? Uh, I guess I, I should uh, review and, and let you know that the square root, what a square root is, it's really asking you what number times itself will give you this number that's inside the square root, right? So what number times itself gives you 4? 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Right? What number times itself gives you 25? 5. So when you take the square root of a perfect square number, you get a nice, beautiful, perfect answer. What's the square root of 121? 11. 11. Okay, uh, let's freestyle here. What's the square root of 16? 4. Four. What's the square root of 49? 7. Seven. What's the square root of uh, 100? 10. 10. Square root of uh, 25? 5. 5. The square root of 50? What? The square root of 50? Now, the square root of 50, it, it, it's not that you can't do it. You, you could get a calculator and you could do a square root of 50. And on the calculator, it's going to give you a crazy decimal. decimal. And I, when I say crazy, I'm talking there's no repetition and it goes on forever. And, and yeah, the square root of 50 would be about 7.1 something something and it goes on forever. Okay. Um, and again, you could do that on a calculator. But what I want to emphasize here is that when you take the square root of a non-perfect square number, it's going to be a crazy decimal, which we call what? Irrational. irrational. Again, irrational is crazy. Kind of like pi. Pi is crazy. 3.14 blah, blah, blah keeps going, no pattern, and it never ends. The same thing for the square root of 7, or the same thing for the square root of 3, square root of a 15, square root of 20. Anything that any square root of a non-perfect square number is going to give you an irrational, crazy decimal. So you could go back to your diagram, that, that uh, picture that we're drawing on our notebooks, and on the irrational numbers, you could put some examples of square roots of numbers that don't work. I mean, that don't work out perfectly. So you could put like the square root of 3, the square root of 7, the square root of a 13, right? Could you put the square root of 25 as an irrational number? The square root of 25 is an irrational number. Could you do that? No, because the square root of 25 is what? 5, and that's a natural number. So it has to be a, a, a number that doesn't work out nice for it to be irrational. Okay. So let's do some practice here. Jot this down in your notebooks. Okay, so uh, right here I put the little diagram that you guys should have in your notebooks just to help us when we're classifying. So the square root of 7, what is that? Is it rational or is it irrational? irrational? Irrational. It doesn't make sense because if you actually did it on the calculator, it would give you a crazy decimal. So let's all write down irrational for number one. Number two, I see a negative sign. Does that automatically make it an integer? No. Integers are nice negative numbers like negative three, like negative 53, but not decimals or fractions. Whenever you have a decimal or a fraction, what do we call that? Rational, rational right? The word ratio, the word ratio, is inside rational, and a rational number is really a ratio, which a ratio is a fraction. So anytime you have a fraction or a decimal, we call those rational numbers. So the number two is rational. Number three, irrational. irrational. When we say irrational, we're talking it's crazy, that it doesn't make sense. Eight over two is four. Eight over two is four. Is that crazy? No, that's, a that's a nice, beautiful, natural number. So eight over two is four. Let's all write down four because that's what we're really classifying. The number four is natural. 
I mean, you could say that it's an integer, you could say it's a whole number, but to be as specific as possible, we're just, we're just gonna say that four is natural. How about number four, which is a number negative 83, what's that? Integer. integer, that's right, it's a nice negative number, no decimal, no fraction. How about number five, the number zero? Whole number. And I'm sorry, but we do have more, check it out. So number six, 0.555, and with that little line up on top, that means that it continues forever. Now, what would you say that is? Now, a lot of students, even myself, uh, when I first started teaching this, I thought, oh, that's irrational because it continues forever. But that's not the case. It does make sense. If you're able to write it as a nice fraction, you'll be, I mean, it's rational. It makes sense. And anything that repeats, that's why I say pi is irrational because it doesn't repeat. There is no pattern. But right here, this repeats, and this would, believe it or not, be the fraction 5 over 9. If you actually took a calculator and did 5 divided by 9, it'll give you the repeating decimal 0 0.5555555. So even if it repeats, you could still convert it to a fraction. Now, if it goes on forever and it doesn't repeat, that's where it's irrational. Okay, how about, uh, so we said 0 0.5555 is really 5 ninths, which means that it is rational. How about the next one? Pi is irrational. It doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Because it, it does not repeat. It goes on forever. Now, number eight is a tricky one. I put this up here on purpose. The square root of negative nine, it's, it's not, it's actually not even a real number. Because remember, the square root of something is asking for what number squared gives you this answer. So if you say the answer is 3, wait a minute, 3 times 3 is positive 9. And if you think, oh, maybe negative 3 is the answer. No, negative 3 times negative 3 is also positive 9, not negative 9. This is more for advanced. Once you get to Algebra 2, you're going to be dealing with these guys. These are called imaginary. The answer to this is actually 3i. It's imaginary. So the only point I want to imagine, what? I can't even spell, hold on. Imaginary, without the x, imaginary. Man, you guys understand what I'm saying, right? Okay, so the square root of negative 9 is imaginary. It's not real. It's not real. It's not a real number, okay? And like I said, this uh, 3i business or imaginary numbers, that's more algebra 2, more advanced algebra. But I just wanted to throw it out there right now. Now, check this out. I would like you to, whoops. I would like you to uh, copy down these instructions and the same exact numbers again. Now notice that the instructions are different. I want to make a point here. On this one, the instruction says, state all the groups that the following numbers belong to. On the previous instructions, it just said, be as specific as possible. Right here, state all the groups. So the number square root of seven, we're gonna start by saying, hey, that number is a real number. It's real, okay? What else is it? What kind of number, what kind of real number is it? Does it make sense or is it crazy? It's crazy. It's crazy. What do we call that? Irrational. Irrational. And it's definitely not rational if it's irrational. And it's definitely not a integer. It's not a whole number. It's not a natural number. So that's all the groups that that number belongs to. How about the next one, number two? Uh, what are all the groups that it belongs to? We could always say real. All these numbers are real, except for like the square root of a negative. But anyway, it's real. What else? It's, it's, it's rational. That means that it makes sense. You could make it a fraction or a decimal. It is a decimal. Um, is it an integer? No. no. Even though there's a negative, it's not an integer, right? Integers are nice negative numbers like negative 3, negative 5, negative 50, but not negative 0.5. That's all the groups it belongs to. How about number three? Is it real? Yes, because the number four is real. Is it rational? Yes. yes. Is it an integer? Yes. yes. Is it a whole number? Yes. yes. Is it a natural number? Yes. yes. So you see the difference in the instructions is going to be the difference in your answer. Right here it says state all the groups that it belongs to. So you would have to actually list all the groups, okay? Um, I'm not going to write them. I'll just say them. The number negative 83, 
Is it real? Yes, it's real. Is, it, is the number negative 83, is it rational? Yes. Is it an integer? Yes. Is it a whole number, negative 83? No. So you don't write these guys down. You only write real, rational, and integer. Make sense? So if they tell you list all the groups, that's what you ha you're going to have to do. A whole number. But to list all of them, it's not just whole. It's also an integer. It's also rational. It's also real. Okay. This repeating decimal, that's really the fraction 5 ninths. And that's rational. And that is real. And that's it. It's not natural. It's not a whole number. It's not an integer. Number 7, that's a real number. Um, pi is a real number, and it's also irrational. This one is not real. This one's imaginary. Okay, so let's move on to the actual homework that we're going to do in class right now. So this is our actual very first homework assignment. What are we going to do with it? Glue stick it into our notebook. Tape it into our notebook. Uh, we don't even have to worry about left side, right side. Let's just put it on the next available page. As long as there's a title, date, and day, we're good. By the way, on this worksheet itself, how about we, we right here in this area write down homework and then write down 0.2 WS number one. That way we have a, a good description on the worksheet itself. It's section 0.2 and it is the very first worksheet that we're doing in this class, Algebra 1. Okay, so homework 0.2 WS number one. Okay, so right here, notice that the instructions say check all that apply. Okay, it doesn't say just give me the group it belong that give me that one single specific group it belongs to. It says name all the groups. So the square root of three, um, the square root of three is that a real number? Yes. Yeah, it's a real number. It's an ugly number if you do it on a calculator, it'll give you a crazy decimal. But it's definitely real. So you could put you could say yes, or you could just put a check mark or an X or a happy face. I don't know whatever you want. Right? Check. It's definitely real. Okay, is it irrational? Remember, irrational is crazy. So yeah, this one's definitely crazy. If you do the square root of three on a, on a calculator, it'll give you a crazy decimal that never ends and that doesn't repeat. Um, is the square root of three rational? No, it can't be. If it's irrational, it can't be rational. If it doesn't make sense, that means that it, you know, it can't make sense. All right, so is it a whole number? No. Is it an integer? No. Is it a natural number? No. So that's it. You only check off those two because those are the only two groups that it actually belongs to. And right here we're saying check all that apply. Now if they just say classify, you want to be as specific as possible. But right here they're saying check all that apply, so you check every single one that it belongs to. So let's do the next one. By the way, I'm doing the homework for you right now. Right? So uh, one half, is that a real number? Yes. yes, check. Is it irrational? No. no. We understand what one half is. It makes sense. So that means that it is rational. So you check that, right? Um, is one half a whole number? No. no. Is one half an integer? No. Is one half a natural number? No. no. So that's it. So that's all we check off. How about the square root of four? What do you guys say? What's the square root of four? Two. 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 So we're really classifying the nice, beautiful, natural number two. So when we think of, let me actually write this out. Let me put a two right here. When we think of the number two, that's definitely a real number. Yes. Is the number two irrational? Heck no, it's rational. Okay, Is the number 2 a whole number? Yes. yes. Is the number 2 an integer? Yes. yes. Is the number 2 a natural number? Yes. yes. You guys get the idea? So this is it, guys. You're doing this whole uh, worksheet in class. You should finish it before leaving. Plenty of time to do it in class. And uh, if you want to check your answers, all you have to do is watch this video because on the video, you'll have these answers right here. And you'll be able to just check through. You could hit pause on the video when you're watching it so you could verify your answers.